Hey folks, it's Dom here, and today I'll be showing off the last 12 cards to ever get added to Legends. And these are each of the monthly cards, and I'll be putting them in a tier list today with 5 different tiers. So without further ado, we might as well get into this and start off with, obviously, January's card, which was the Headless Zombie. A 4 cost 3-4 with Summon Consumer card, last cast, draw a copy of the Consume card. Now this is for Sorcerer. And it actually does have a really good effect in the f fact of you can basically just get anything in your graveyard back to your hand. Although the issues with this kind of start with the fact that you do need to get this to die. Obviously it can go into Telvani decks, which, you know, have a lot of Betray and Sacrifice cards. But still, if your opponent silences this or banishes it, it won't get as effective, obviously. And for its cost, the stats aren't that great. But then again, you've got to realise quite a lot of decks might not have any silence or even, like, banishing mechanics. So, against some decks, they can't do anything against this. While others, they can just basically just get rid of this and treat your kind of, like, little combos, nothing. And the fact is, as you are consuming that card, it means it won't be in your graveyard anymore and is banished. So, this can cause you to banish really good cards. Because it can give you them really easily back into your hand. It's going to go up high, but it's not going in top tier. So I'm going to put it in the pretty cool tier. That's right, we got some weird tiers today. I didn't really know what to make these ones. So we've got some very, very bland middle tiers. At least for names. But yeah, that's the first of our 12. And next we have Sky Shard. An endurance support, which is a free cost. And when summoned, you'll get to draw a random creature from your deck. And from then on, whenever you draw a creature on your turn it will increase its cost by two but it will also give it plus two power and health so if your deck's got a lot of magicka boosting this is great because it's obviously making cards stronger but the issue is if your deck has no way <laughs> i mean obviously you're playing endurance so you're gonna have some ways to boost your magicka but if you haven't drawn well or if you're actually just pu pushing your cards up too much this can end up being an, a genuine problem so it's it's quite good. It's not terrible, but it isn't like amazing just because it's making all your cards more expensive and slowing down your own play style. So it's not going to be in the top two tiers. But then again, it is still quite good. And as it's a support, if your opponent's not running any support removal or they haven't grabbed their one dismantle in the deck, this card's pretty much there to stay. So by the time you get to the late rounds, this is just a complete bonus for your weaker cards. So, for that, I'm going to put it in mid-tier. It's probably going to go in meh, just because, yes, it can be quite good, but at the same time, it can actually end up messing up things or just not being that great. But, you know, it, it's good, I'd say. It's it's definitely not low-tier. I'll give it that much. And next, we have Supreme Dragon. Probably one of my favourite ones of the pack, or at least with the kind of card art. And it is a Crusader 6-cost. 7-7, seven, seven, which at the start of each turn, so not just your turns, but your opponent's turns as well, for each enemy creature in this lane with power more than 3, set its power to 3. Now this, this is strong, because the fact that it's at the start of every single turn, and it only affects your opponent, that's just two things which are just really horrible. In fact, in my most recent video, I come up against this and get kind of almost slightly stumped by it. But fortunately, I end up getting the kill that turn. But the fact is that it can make your really strong units with buffs just lose all of that. Just with this one ability. And the fact is, because it will go off at the start of your opponent's turn, they have no way to react to it unless they get a prophecy and your opponent's played in a weird order. So, most of the time, this can at least guarantee get rid of things. I know it won't stop anything like lethal, but if you're up against, like, an equip deck, this can just curb stomp it sometimes. So, I'm going to have to put that in top tier, because not only is its stats really good for a 6 cost, and it's a dragon as well, which has some good support, but it's also in Crusader, which has excellent draw power. So, getting to it will be very easy, and I think it just all round is the best of the whole set. So, for April, we have Dune Ripper. And Dune Ripper is a 5 cost 4 free, which has the ability when Dune Ripper enters a lane, it deals 2 damage to an enemy creature in the lane, Pilfer move. So Archer has quite a few movement mechanics, so that means that you'll be kind of doing a bit of 2 damage every once in a while, which is about the equivalent of a Firebolt, meaning this is pretty... The stats it's got are a bit tame, 
for its cost. But then again, its ability is quite strong and it has the ability to move if it hits face. But I guess the issue with this is if your opponent just blocks up their lane with big and like strong guards, it can't really do much unless it gets lethal or you have other movement cards in your hand to kind of work with it. So it's definitely a good card. It has a nice little ability, but it is quite easy for your opponent to kind of just stop it or require you to spend resources to kind of get its combos going back up again. So for that, it won't be going in the top tier, but it's also 100% not a low tier card. It's definitely something which has a lot of like potential and can work really well. So I'm probably just going to put it in meh. Because I would want to, it's something where if I had a tier in between Met and Pretty Cool, it would 100% go in there. But I just don't think it's good enough to go into Pretty Cool. So we're going to have to put it here in mid tier. And now for May, we have Priest of Mara. A free cost 2 5 for willpower, which when summoned will equip an amulet of Mara to an enemy creature and another friendly creature without guard. And an amulet of Mara is a zero cost item. Which gives the wielder one health extra and the wielder can't attack other creatures with an amulet of Mara. Now my issue here is that it's just too specific. The actual stats on Priest of Mara for a free cost, they're alright. They're not really a problem. They're not anything to be flexing about. But they're nothing like bad or terrible. But this item, it's just... You're basically buffing up one of your unit's health by one and one of your opponent's unit's health by one and telling it that one can't kill that one and both of them can't have guard, which is, you know, already limiting as it means that, you know, if you have, like, a guard card you want to protect, you can't really do it. This does have, obviously, very specific plays which can work with it, but it just doesn't seem that worthwhile to have in the deck, in my opinion, because, like, you're still having to buff up an opponent's card even slightly, and it's to stop one card from destroying one other, so it's going to have to go in the general forager tier, I'm afraid. It's just, you know, with compared to all the other cards this year, or last year even now, well, it's probably the worst. Anyway, June bought us Dragonfire Wizard, a free cost 2 free for Mage, which at the end of your turn will add a flame to Dragonfire Wizard. And as a last gasp, he will add it to your hand. Um, and basically how this card works is for every flame on Dragonfire Wizard, it will deal one extra damage and you'll gain one health back. And you can target this on your opponent's face, by the way. Just keep that in mind because it just says deal one damage, not one damage to a creature. So this is almost guaranteed to get maybe two or three procs on it. But it will 100% have one before your opponent can do anything. Yes, this has the same problem as the first card we showed off the Headless Zombie. That it can be silenced or banished or work around Last Gasp. And because you're not in Telvani, you don't have many sacrifice methods. But in mage decks, you've got a lot of control. And the one thing sometimes that mage deck can worry about is health. So this card just works really well for it. And if you do play this as soon as possible and kind of push it into the later rounds, it can be a one cost deal five damage, gain five health, which can target face. So it has the potential to be really, really good. And it's made... Well, it's the attributes go in control decks, so I'm going to have to put it quite high up and pretty cool. I'd say this and Dune Ripper are both ones that I'd want to put in a tier in between pretty cool and meh. But in my opinion, I'd say Wizard's a bit better, but Dune Ripper's a bit worse, so they're going where they are. Right, next we have Monster Perfection Lab, a one cost support, which at the end of your turn, you may choose a friendly creature wielding three or more items. If you do, sacrifice this card and choose an item from your deck to equip to this creature. Now, I do have quite a few problems with this card. The positives, though, are that it's very cheap and it will allow you to grab any item from your deck. So, the issues I have with it is that you need to have a monster with three or more items. I know this is quite possible and very easily possible for some item decks, but my issue with it is that, you know, if, if you do get this at the wrong time, it's just a bit of a brick and that it goes off at the end of your turn. So that means that you don't get to kind of work with this item until your opponent's had a full turn in between, where if they've got control, they can just get rid of the unit. If they're going aggro, it means that item's not always going to be taken into account. And it's just the fact that this card's quite slow, despite it being a very low cost, that I just don't think it's that great. I mean, it's not too bad, but... I'm going to have to put in don't care to know because it's not that great. 
and I'd say it's worse than Sky Shard and Dune Ripper, but it's 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 not terrible, I guess. But it's just not amazing. Right, over to August, where we have Skooma Cat's Whimsy, another one cost support, but this time for neutral. And this card will make your cards that didn't start in your deck cost one less. See, if you're making an RNG deck like the one I run, this card's actually quite good because every card's going to cost one less. And as it's a support, it's quite hard for your opponent to hit, usually, unless they're in endurance and they've got a lot of support removal, or they've got a dismantle in hand, you never know. But the issue is here, with the cards that don't start in your deck, you have no control over. So this is making random cards cost slightly less, meaning that in some cases you'll be hitting amazing things and making them a bit cheaper, but then in other scenarios, he's just going to hit a bunch of useless stuff which isn't going to work with your deck. Make it cheaper so I guess you can just put it down and get out of your hand, but it's still not that great because it doesn't help your deck's game plan because of those random cards having nothing to do with your actual game plan. So I think it's a nice card, it's definitely a good meme, but it isn't amazing, so it's going to have to go and don't care to know with the other one cost support. So you can kind of see here that we've almost started to form a bit of a bomb for everywhere, and you can roughly see where I view cards for what they are for the last few months. So yeah, other than that, let's get into September. So for September we have Dark Main, a 2 cost 2 free for Monk, which when summoned, or when you summon a creature in this lane, if it's full, Dark Main will move. When Dark Main moves, he gains a plus two power and drain for the rest of the turn. So he's a nice inclusion in your Khajiit Monk Pilfer decks, but he's not that great, I guess. I mean, he's another one of these cards which is a cool idea, and I like the thought of him, and he's a nice cheap cost, and he has all right-ish stats, but he's basically just a Khajiit with a move ability and the like ability of the card, Monk Strike. Which I will admit is a 4 cost card, so now that I think about that, it does make this quite decent. But it does require you to fill one lane, meaning you have to commit to that lane a bit more just to move this one card. And the thing is, if you're committing to one lane and trying to get it to move out, you're not really focusing on what's on that other lane anyway. Except for getting him over there, so you can kind of mess up your own kind of plays here. If you kind of dedicate too much to him. So he is a nice little card. Definitely one that we don't want to put in a low tier so we'll put him in meh but again yeah see he's someone i'd want to put maybe in the same kind of category as dune ripper but meh is just the best one that i'd say for what we have here <laughs> then october brought yagram's workshop a free cost neutral support with free uses and when activated your neutral summon and assemble abilities will trigger twice at this turn now i really love neutral like Something like this, or Factotum support, is something I've always wanted to see. And this does do it very well. <clears throat> In fact, I think this was so popular that it did make people run Dismantle a lot more frequently in any of their decks. Because they were just scared to see, like, almost all neutral decks dropping and then getting off these crazy combos. Because, I mean, you could get off some really mad ones. Like, if you used Old Salty's Assault, then, you know, you summon all your crabs. Obviously, one will hit face twice. Mud Crab Merchant will give two random cards, and then, you know, you'll have these extra just cards to mess about with. But then with your Factotums, obviously, because of the Assemble side, it means that you're giving the rest of your Factotum cards in deck some ridiculous abilities. And just with that little combo there, it can be really insane. And it's probably the reason why we didn't get to see any more Factotum cards. So for this reason alone, that it can be such a great neutral support, it's got to go in pretty cool. I mean, it is, it's a cool little idea, you know, to have your neutral cards activate twice. Because neutral isn't that strong on its own, but with cards like this, it can become worthy of some decks. So yeah, it's going to go up quite, quite high. Next we have November's card, Giant's Camp, another support, but this time for strength and being a 4 cost, which is ongoing. And at the start of your turn, set each friendly creature's power equal to the power of your most powerful creature. Lots of power here. Lots of power in a giant's camp. We know they got a lot of power. If they hit you and score them, you go up to the moon. But anyway, this card is quite good. And it actually manages to counter some things like Supreme Dragon. Because even though they're lowering the kind of power of all your units, you're then popping it back up with this. Because it's setting all your units' powers to be the same thing. 
Unfortunately, if your most powerful unit was in the same lane as Supreme Dragon, though, it will go down. And then if you've got something else in the other lane, I guess they'll go to that. But if not, then your most powerful thing becomes a free. And I mean, you know, anything's better. You know, any little buff. But for its cost, it is quite good. I do like it. But the issue is, it can, they can, your opponent can mess about with you quite a bit with it. And then after like one turn, if you've not really summoned anything, it won't get off much of a use. <clears throat> so it's definitely a very mid tier item. I'm going to put it in meh, but it could definitely go in pretty cool, I guess, maybe. It's one of those ones I'm very unsure of. Pretty cool or meh. I'm going to put it in meh, but it's definitely like probably the, the best one in meh by far. Right, and then finally we have December's card, the Yakudan Nightblade, which is a 1 cost 1-4, one which has friendly creatures equipped with items are immune to silence. Now this is just really great at making sure that your opponents don't just get rid of all your items like that. But the issue is that, well this card can be quite vulnerable and become an easy target for your opponent. But if you give it an item, well pop, that's not really an issue anymore. He is very cheap, and of course, you know, he does have good stats for a 1 cost, so we need to keep them in mind. And the fact is, obviously, he's made for equip decks, but if your opponent can kind of get to your big units before equipping them and stuff, well, that can become a bit of an issue. I'd say, if you've got something like um, Corsair Ship Down, this card can become quite deadly, uh, at least if your opponent's running an Endurance Silence deck. But because of that, actually, and your opponent might not be running Endurance or Silence or anything like that, it can end up being kind of a redundant effect and just being a nice health one cost card. So it does depend on your matchup, but in the right matchup, it can be lethal, but in the wrong matchup, it's basically just a nice one cost card. So it's going to go in meh. Again, maybe on the higher side, leaning slightly towards pretty cool, but it wouldn't be better than Giants Camp. But yeah, that's our tier list for 2020's monthly cards. Unfortunately, the last monthly cards we'll be seeing coming into Elder Scrolls Legends. Tell me what you thought. Where would you have put all these cards? Because I'm sure what you're thinking right now is probably different to what I've got. But hey, that's this year's, or yeah, 2020's monthly card tier list. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, liking and subscribing obviously massively helps me out. And tell me if there's any other kind of cards that you want me to tier list. I'll see you next time.